Hello and welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl and here we are with a, another series. This time it's focused on Warhammer the Old World. So for those that aren't aware, Warhammer the Old World is a return to the original uh, lore and, uh, and world of Warhammer fantasy battle before Age of Sigmar and with it brings a essentially a new game uh, for the tabletop, but is a return to the style of Warhammer Fantasy Battle with rank and file. Now, this has been announced as being in creation right now uh, with Games Workshop. There is currently no release date, um, but it certainly is expected either by the end of 2023 or the first half of 2024. So in reality, not that far away. Now, in terms of what this series is looking at, it's looking at those models um, that are currently available to buy that could well be expected to be um, part of the army books and army lists that will be used in Warhammer The Old World. Now, we do know there are new models coming and we'll look at that when we come on to each of the factions. We'll be looking at the factions in alphabetical order, starting with those that are currently in the narrative and then looking at those that are outside of the narrative. Though we do know there are at least rules coming for every faction uh, when uh, the game is first released. Now, why am I doing this? Well, um, for people like me who are old Warhammer Fantasy Battle players that, you know, probably still have existing armies, maybe gathering dust somewhere, um, who haven't been keeping up to date with what's available on the web store, it's a look at um, what you could still buy to flesh out the armies that you already own. If you're new to Warhammer Fantasy Battle, uh, then it's a look at if you were going to start an army, what an army might look like, what the models like might look like, um, and, uh, and and give you a chance to maybe dip in early. Uh, if you're like me, I'm a very slow painter, so this gives me a chance to buy models in advance of the game being released and have them painted and ready to be a play when the game do does fully release. And as well, not many people are sat there with, you know, three, four, five hundred pounds. We don't know how big the armies are going to be to drop on an army on day one. So this does allow you to then spread the costs over buying the units over many, many months. And sort of you can buy a unit, paint it up and next month buy a unit and you're not having to find the money all in one go. Now, I should say everything that is in this series are our personal opinions only. I have no inside knowledge. I have no relationship with Game Workshop in that way other than being a fan of Warhammer Fantasy Battle and uh, uh, and and the, and the law of that game and everything um, in the series is correct at the time of recording only uh, and I have based a lot of what I'm going to talk about on the last remaining army book that was published for the factions many of those will be eighth edition but there are a few like Chaos Dwarfs and Bretonia that didn't have eighth edition army books. Now, before we get into it, other miniatures are available. Uh, you can find, obviously, the old classic miniatures that are no longer available to buy from Games Workshop on eBay, for example. Uh, you've got other manufacturers um, that you can use as counts as, such as DS Vault with their sort of Crusaders and Templars and so on, uh, Kings of War. Um, there's also those uh, 3D printer um, opportunities out there whether you own a 3d printer and you're looking for the files or whether you're looking for someone to do it for you that's an option but always remember uh, that non-official games workshop models are not usually allowed to be used in their stores at gaming tables or in the tournaments also when you're looking at the games workshop models on their website check the bases some of these will have round bases. Some of them will have square. Now, we know that they're going to be square bases, but we also know there's going to be some base size changes. So please keep that in mind when you're buying the models. Um, and again, you know, if a lot of times the bases, don't you don't really care if you're just playing at home or playing in a local club. But if you are playing in tournament, you will need obviously the correct base sizes. 
Um, but if you're not too fussed about making sure they're fully correct, then you've obviously, you know, consider the fact that when you're playing a rank and file game uh, like Warhammer Fantasy Battle uh, was and like the old world will be, movement trays will be a really important part. So you can mitigate a lot of the base issues with movement trays. Also, check the material. Uh, some people really don't like fine cast, so there's still quite a lot of the old models um, uh, that are dotted around that may well be fine cast. So check that out versus plastic. And if you are looking at stuff off eBay or whatever, um, uh, and it's forge world, that of course will be resin. So, for example, the Chaos Dwarves. And overall, given what we know about Warhammer the Old World, the timeline it's going to be set in, um, I would avoid buying named characters unless there's a nostalgia thing that there, there will surely be um rules even if games workshop doesn't do it people the fan base will provide rules uh for some of those characters that you might have played in the past um you can consider the timeline uh and and maybe take a gamble on if you look at some of the longer lived characters whether they be demons or, or whatever even elves for example you know maybe those characters will make an appearance uh but with a new game with a new timeline i can certainly expect that we might see a few new character named characters put in um though of course as always you can use these named characters as accounts as so if you had carl franz the emperor of the empire for example on his griffin uh, there's no reason you couldn't use him as a general on griffin if that option was available so that is essentially the intro of why we're doing it and some of the considerations uh, that you need to consider while uh, while we go through each of these videos but without further ado let's go and look at the next faction so the next faction up is the Ogre Kingdoms. So they were on the list, but they were on the list of the factions that were on the outside of the narrative campaign. Uh, not a faction that I know the most about. It is my least personal favourite faction. I never had the army book and never had an army of ogres. Uh, but we are still basing on the last edition of their army book and army list that is available. Uh, and as we've uh, said for many of the factions before, is special lords, uh, special named lords and so on, uh, not recommended to chase after um, if they are available because of the timeline. Uh, and we'll wait and see what is available, though those lords could be used in counts as. But if we look at the ogres, Greasus, Goldtooth, Scrag the Slaughterer, Gark, Ironskin, Groth One Finger, uh, should be Groth One Finger, and Morg Magmaborn, all uh, not available uh, from Games Workshop's website. However, the Tyrant, which is the top centre picture there at £22.50 is, and the Slaughter Master at £45 is also available. Generic Lord's a pretty safe bet to be in an army list. When we look at the special heroes, there was four. There was Goldfag Manny to Brag the Gutsman, Brow Slave Lord and Jared the Red. Uh, none of those heroes currently available on Games Workshop's website. Uh, however, four of the five heroes are, only the Bruiser is not. So you've got the Butcher, which is in the, the centre uh, left there, £30. You've got the Fire Belly, which is centre right at £30. You've got a Hunter, which is the Blood Pelt Hunter at £27.50. And that is the bottom left picture. Uh, and you've also got the Yeet Rhyme Speaker, which is known as an Icebrow Ice Brow Hunter. I should say Ice Brow Hunter. £30 and is the image on the top left. So four of the five heroes are available on Games Workshop's website today. In terms of the core units, uh, pretty good selection of core units. Uh, in fact, they're all there. The Ogre Bulls, now known as Ogor Gluttons, six for £35. You've got Iron Guts there, four for £27.50. They're in the middle. And then Noblar Fighters, 20 for £24 uh, on the right-hand side. So again, like we're seeing with a lot of these factions that are on the, the outside of the rules uh, and so on here, they're going to get one release of rules at the beginning and that's it. Um, pretty good selection of units available for them uh, much better than what we see for the empire and high elves and so on in terms of special units uh there's a few missing here the crag beast the rhinox war chariot noblar trappers and skewer sling are not available but lead belchers are four for 27 pounds 50 and that is the image top left you got mournfang cavalry that's the image center uh bottom there 
four for forty five pounds. You got man eaters, um, which is three for sixty pounds. That's the center top. You got a saber tusk back, um, which are now known as frost sabers, two for fourteen. You got yeeties, um, uh, three for thirty five pounds. That's the uh, left middle. You've got a gorger, which is uh, there, uh, which you get one for eighteen pounds. That's left bottom, and then there's also the Noblar um, scrap launcher, which is twenty five pounds. So again, a really good selection of units for the Ogre Kingdoms, with only a few that are missing. A few more missing in the rare uh, units. However, the Grimhorn Rhinox Rider's not there, but the Iron Blaster is there for twenty five pounds. That's bottom left and then you've got a slave giant missing but the stone horn 42 pounds 50 in the middle there thunder tusk 42 pounds 50 uh bottom uh right uh also available however the ice mammoth isn't so still plenty of choice there to make an army some really nice looking units although not my flavor um and you know worth picking up if ogres are your thing um all of these expected to be in the army list it's a personal opinion, but that's certainly what I'm expecting. And that's it for the Ogre Kingdoms. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't know, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more content, then please hit that subscribe button. Totally free for you to do, but it means a huge amount for me. So thank you for that in advance. You've been watching The Ghost Owl, and I'll see you very soon.